Dinosaurs have fascinated humans for as long as we've known about them. They're now extinct and we know of their existence through fossils. So today, we're learning about fossil formation and how extinction happens. Fossils are the remains of organisms from millions of years ago that can be found in rocks. It's important that you do say millions of years ago when you define it. You need to know the different ways that fossils can be formed. The first is when the conditions for decay are absent. For example, warmth and oxygen. This insect is trapped in amber, so will have no oxygen. Secondly, hard parts of the organism, like the skeleton and teeth, are replaced with minerals as they decay. And thirdly, fossils can be preserved traces of organisms, rather than the organism itself, such as footprints, burrows and rootlet traces, which gives evidence of plants. We can learn from fossils how much or how little different organisms have changed as life developed on Earth, but the record is incomplete. Let's look at why it's incomplete. Well, first of all, most organisms that die don't actually become fossils. Then early fossils have actually been lost by geological activity. For example, when the crust moves and is pushed down into the mantle, the fossils get destroyed. Then we think that there are lots of fossils still to be found. Finally, early forms of life were soft-bodied, which means they left few or no traces behind, as soft parts decay and cannot be replaced by minerals. This is why we cannot be certain about how life began on Earth. Now we're going to look at extinction. Extinction occurs when there are no remaining individuals of a species still alive. There are loads of examples of this, but the most commonly known ones are the dinosaur species. You need to know how extinction can occur, so let's look at the five methods. First of all is the introduction of new predators. If a new species of predator appears, it can quickly cause the extinction of its prey species. This happened when humans introduced predators on the island of dodos. Secondly, introducing new diseases can quickly cause extinction if the species has no immunity to it. Next up, there can be new, more successful competitors. If the new species competes for the same resources, such as food or space, then the old one may die out. In this case, the new plant gets all of the sunlight and all of the water, and so the old plant will instead die. Now we'll look at some physical changes. There can be changes to the environment over geological time. This just means a really long period, like millions and billions of years. For example, an ice age could cause the extinction of species that live in really warm climates. And finally, single catastrophic events, like an asteroid collision or a volcanic eruption, could cause a mass extinction. This is one theory for how dinosaurs died. Okay, now you've learned a little bit about extinction and fossils, Try the questions. Press pause, give them a go, and press play when you're ready to go over them. 1. A woolly mammoth fossil is found in a block of ice. Describe how it became a fossil. It's important to remember our definition of fossil. So first of all, the mammoth had to die. I'm underlining the important parts here. And became frozen and covered in ice. That means the conditions for decay would be absent. That's important too so it will remain intact for millions of years. And that millions of years bit, that's remembering what our definition of fossil is. Two, explain why scientists cannot be certain about how life began on Earth. Well, first of all, there are few or no traces of the first life forms as they were soft bodies, so they left no fossils. Then there was actually nobody there to document the early life so we don't have any first-hand evidence. And finally, early fossils were destroyed by geological activity, the Earth's crust moving. Three, define extinction. This is when there are no individuals of a species still alive. Four, gray squirrels often carry the squirrel pox virus. Most of them are immune to it and survive suggests the impact of grey squirrels inhabiting the same territory as red squirrels. While the red squirrels may die from the virus, as it is a new disease, 
and so they're unlikely to be immune to it. They may also be outcompeted by the grey squirrels for food and space. So ultimately, they may become extinct. How did you do? Fossils provide evidence for evolution. We're going to look at some more evidence in the next video. And please subscribe if you're finding these videos useful. Thanks and bye! Thank you.